We've got dual audiences here. Some devotees online as well as here in person at the temple. So I'd like to welcome you all. My name is Krishna Dulal Das. And I'm going to be your host, or your partial co-host for this evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to our ISKCON Ottawa Center here. This is uh, the home of our beloved Sri Shigor Nitai. Um, and we just finished having a, a kirtan, having an arati ceremony where we're, this is what we do in our Vaishnava tradition, is we, we offer different paraphernalia to the Lord. We had a flower, you can see we had fire, um, an incense, uh, a fan, especially during this hot weather. It's nice to get fanned. So we do this for the Lord and we sing. Everybody likes to be sung to, right? What's the best thing that we like when it's our birthday? Somebody sings happy birthday to us, right? Or sings to us. So uh, this is what we do. We sing and we connect uh, with the Lord in this way and with each other. And um, the next part of our program is going to be a, a discussion. It'll be actually a presentation of a guest speaker here with us today. And uh, that will go for about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, and then there will be some time left for, for discussion, questions. So if anybody has any questions, comments, or realizations that they would like to share, uh, this is your chance to, to meditate on it and, uh, and uh, yeah, share. So I'm just going to share, I want to also acknowledge all the devotees here that are online here. So I'd like to give a special welcome to, who do we have? Bhakta Ilya Prabhu, welcome, Hari Paul. We've got Samuel Prabhu here as well. Hare Krishna, Mother Anne, Hari Bol. We've got another Mother Anne here too. We've got two Annes. Wow. Identical. And then Mother Elena, Hare Krishna, Guru Prashad Prabhu. Hari Bol, welcome. Hari Namarita Prabhu, aka Hare Krishna Mani. Welcome. JY, welcome. Hare Krishna. Kirti Raj Prabhu, Hari Bol. Mother Lila Mohini, so nice to see you. Hare Krishna. Mother Nicole from New Brunswick, welcome. Paula, Hare Krishna. S, we have an S, welcome S, very nice. And uh, Sharat and Sonia, Sunil Prabhu, Mother Shushma, Mother Yeshika, Matt, and, and Matthew Prabhu, who's here in person as well, but also in two places at once, so welcome. So I'd like to uh, maybe pass it over now to, to Mother Yeshika, if you would do the honors to, to welcoming our speaker for this afternoon. Hare Krishna. Sorry, for some reason my camera doesn't seem to want to today. That's okay, we can hear you. Okay. We'll put on our camera as well. Okay. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Welcome to our Sunday Feast program once again. Today, our guest speaker will be Samuel Prabhu from ISKCON, Montreal. Prabhu is from Northern Quebec and he moved to Montreal to study economics and philosophy. However, he wasn't satisfied with the studies and eventually went on a trip to India where he met devotees for the first time. When he came back, he encountered brahmacharis in the metro and he was very impressed by their knowledge and character. Sometime after, he decided to move into the Montreal temple where he has been engaged in different and various in different activities of Sankirtan during the past couple of years. So I'd like to welcome Samuel Prabhu and hand it over to him. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dear devotees from Iskan Arava, please accept Rambo obeisances on Mr. Shri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for that. I was speaking a few days ago with Krishna Dula Prabhu and he kindly invited me to your Sangha. So uh, I'd like to ask the blessings of all the devotees, the senior devotees like Guru Prashad Prabhu, who are speaking this week also in Montreal, uh, on Zoom also, Paramahamsa Prabhu and so many senior devotees. I noticed the introduction was the one from last time, before I was married. 
Well, I guess it didn't change so much because I'm still uh, involved in the daily sun care town in Montreal. So, uh, so yeah, I, so I was speaking with Krishna Duval Prabhu and uh, I asked him uh, what he wanted me to say. And he gave me the freedom to select the topic. So uh, I was thinking in the past few days, what will I talk about? What will I talk about? And until a few hours ago, I didn't know what I would talk about. But then I was reading in my daily reading of the Bhagavatam. I was reading the chapter uh, in the third canto about uh, the pregnancy of Diti in the evening. And somehow or other, I was thinking, you know, I can't speak. So I was thinking maybe it's a weird chapter to give a Sunday feast class on. But then I, was, I finished the chapter and I was so inspired that I was thinking, I have to speak about this. <laughs> I don't know this chapter, actually. Uh, Diti, the wife of the great sage uh, Kashyapa Muni, she, uh, oh, I get darshan of the devotees in Ottawa. Wow. Well, Jai. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, Diti actually approached her husband, great sage Kashyapa Muni, uh, in the evening for um, because she was feeling some lust in her heart. So she approached her husband for uh, satisfying her sexual desire. And of course, her husband, being a great sage, he could know that this was not really an auspicious time because this is the time where Lord Shiva and many ghosts and bad living entities are kind of wandering around. And he told his wife, you know, this is not really an auspicious time to engage in this. So, but his wife, she was really, you know, like Arjun, he tells Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, he asks Krishna, what is this thing, Krishna, that, you know, forces me to act, you know, like a force, like against my desire. So in the same way, and Krishna, of course, he said, this is lust, which comes from the mode of passion. So Diti, under the strength, the pulling, the strong pulling of lust, she uh, was forced to... Uh, engage in her desire so her husband finally surrendered and partook with her in these activities and uh, and then after of course she started regretting after she did what she wanted to do and she started to pray so much to lord shiva started to pr and to she told her you know she was feeling bad in front of her husband, that I forced my husband, who's such a great sage, uh, to partake in these activities. And so I want to read the verse from the Bhagavatam, actually. And then after that, maybe we can try to understand. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Kashyapa uvacha kita shoka nuta pena sadhya pyatyava marshanat bhagavat yurumanas chava ve maya pichadarat putrasya ivacha putranam babitai kasatam matraha gasyanti yadya shashudam bhagavan yasha sasamam. So this is Shimad Bhagavatam 3.14. Uh, 45 and 40, uh, 44 and 45. So Kashyapa Muni, after her wife, his wife, lamented and prayed to Lord Shiva and prayed to him. He said, <clears throat> because of your lamentation, penitence, and proper deliberation, and also because of your unflinching faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead and your adoration for Lord Shiva, and me, one of the sons of your son, Hiranyakashipu, who will be Prahlad, 
will be an approved devotee of the Lord, and his fame will be broadcast equally with that of the Supreme Personality of God. So just before trying to comment on this verse, I'll just recite a few prayers. Oma Gyana Timiranda Syagyana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yenatas May Shikudare Maha Namo Mahavadanya Krishna Pima Pedayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Dushina Chai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vata Gora Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so uh, here, after Diti uh, realized her mistake, she started, like I was saying, to pray to Lord Shiva. She started to ask for forgiveness for her husband. And then her husband, because he was a great sage, he knew what would happen. He said, because you didn't listen to me, you're, you're going to have two sons who will be demons because we, you can, we know you conceive in this inauspicious time. And I told you it was inauspicious and still you did it. Therefore, two of your sons uh, will be great demons. Of course, who will be Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashi. But he said, because she was repenting and taking shelter of both her husband, who is the guru for the wife, and also of Lord Shiva, who is such a great devotee of the Lord, who is known, it's known that Lord Shiva is very easily pleased. So she offered prayers to him, to this great devotee, and in her heart she repented. So her husband here is saying, because of your lamentation, because of your penitence, and because of your proper deliberation, but also because of your unflinching faith in the Lord, and your adoration for Lord Shiva, and for me, then you'll have a son, a grandson from Maharaj who will be a pure devotee. So when she heard Diti that um, her two sons uh, will be demons, but will also be killed by the Lord, Keshepa Muni told her that her two sons will be killed by the Lord. Not only that, but that her grandson will be a pure devotee. Then she was very satisfied because she was intelligent, being the wife of a great sage. She knew that if someone is killed by the Lord, he attains automatically uh, liberation. And also, we, we know um, that it's said in the Bhagavatam that a pure devotee delivers so many generations. This is a Pramaj, he delivered 14 generations before him, 14 generations after him. So she was only two generations before, so she was part of the the lucky one. So, uh, so then she, we can, what's very interesting actually in this chapter is how devotees react to uh, difficult situations. Like Ditti, although she was pulled uh, by a loss to the point that she, she couldn't help it. All, you know, although she was told, you know, don't buy her husband, you shouldn't do this. Still, she was pulled so strongly, you know, by the ropes of material attachment, of, of uh, the mode of material passion, of lust. Uh, still, she acted like this. But what's important is that after, what did she do? What did she do? She started to repent and take shelter of Lord Shiva, a great devotee of the Lord. Take shelter of her husband. Take shelter uh, of the Supreme Lord like this. And because she did this, what turned out to be actually a curse you know, which was that two of her sons would become uh, very great demons, finally turned out to be a very great benediction that our two sons, although they would terrorize you know, the whole universe, they would end up uh, being killed by the Lord and becoming uh, liberated, and our grandson would become a pure devotee. So this is, um, uh, we can see the strength of the devotee by how they, react in difficult situation who will they take shelter of what will they take shelter of and i found this very in inspiring when i was hearing this and actually there's so many cases i mean we could take the case even of our grandson he was tortured in so many ways by the servants of his father 
Uh, but he was so fixed in his meditation on Krishna that they couldn't, you know, the, the, the servants of Iranya Kashipu could not hurt him in any way. Just like Haridas Thakur, who was beaten in 22 marketplaces, and although he was, you know, like bleeding, like, I mean, he thought he would be bleeding like anything, but then, you know, at, at the end, you noticed that Lord Chaitanya had all the, the scars on his back. Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, he took all the pain of his he absorbed, all the pain of his devotee. So that his devotee who was constantly chanting the names of the Lord, he was completely unaffected. There's also Jayadev Goswami, the great poet who wrote Gita Govinda. One day he was going to beg somewhere. Uh, he was going to beg some, he needed some paraphernalia for the worship of the Lord. And he was walking somewhere and there were some dacoits who arrived. And what they did is they cut his two hands and cut his two legs. And then they throw him in a hole, which is pretty intense. And what did he do when he was in this hole without hands, without feet? He started to recite his own Gita Govinda. He started to glorify the Lord. So, uh, so these are the very intense level of surrender. We see also uh, Prabhupada was often giving the example of Lord Jesus, who although he was on the cross, he was not pointing out, oh, this is your fault, this is your fault. No, he was saying, my father, please forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So the devotees, they don't find the cause. Oh, he, I'm suffering because of him. I'm suffering because of him. No, they take everything as the mercy of the Lord. Actually, Parikshit Maharaj, in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, he, he meets the bull of Dharma. And when he meets the bull of Dharma, who is struggling very much, he has only one leg left. And he asks him, you know, who... Who caused you this pain? Because Maharaj Parikshit is a Kshatri. I say, who is it who caused you this pain? You know, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to give you justice. And the bull of Dharma, he said, well, you know, there is different opinions. Some people, they see it as, you know, the cause is material nature. Some say it's providence. Some say it's uh, the will of the Lord. And it said that Maharaj Parikshit, he was very impressed because he said, oh, this bull is actually a great personality because he's not like, blame, oh, you know, it's, it's this person. No, he was not finding fault. And in that verse, what's very interesting is that it said that if we find, if we point out the cause of our suffering, like we say, like someone comes and he delivers us our karma. And if we point him as the cause of what happens, we get the same reaction as he gets by uh, causing us this violence. That verse, uh, Maharaj Parikshit says in the 17th chapter of the first canto. So by pointing out the cause of our troubles in this world, oh, it's because of the government. And you know, it's because of the uh, Illuminati's or whatever. <laughs> by pointing the cause, we get the reactions of uh, those who actually perpetrate like perpetrate uh, these things against us. So devotees, they don't do this. Devotees, they just take everything as the Lord's mercy and they take shelter of the Lord, they take shelter of the devotees. So here in this case, Diti took shelter uh, of Lord Shiva, who is very easily pleased. And that's um, actually there's the case in the, the tenth canto, or in Krishna book, that uh, of uh, Nala Kuvara and Mani Griva, who were in their past lives, they were in the heavenly planets, and they were quite enjoying themselves actually, with some uh, you know heavenly girls in the river. They were all naked, intoxicated. You know, it was it was having a lot of fun there. But then. Who arrived there? Narada Muni walked by, the great sage, the great devotee Narada Muni. And the girls, somehow, they got the intelligence that this great sage, Narada Muni, is there. Maybe we should cover up, uh, we should cover our bodies. So that's what they did. But 
uh, Manigriva and Nakuvar, they, they didn't get this insight and they just stayed naked in front of the sage. And now the Muni kind of got angry and he cursed them. You know, you like to just, you know, show yourself like this. Then in your next life, become you're going to become trees, actually. You know, naked all day in all conditions. This is what you're getting. But, of course, now the Muni, because he's such a great well-wisher of everyone, because that's what devotees are. They're well-wishers of everyone. Uh, he gave them the blessings that they would be liberated by Krishna. And here, I noted this. Uh, the Krishna book, Prabhupada, here he's paraphrasing Krishna, who after Krishna delivered Nalakubar and Manigriva, he told them, you are very fortunate because not only you were cursed by Narada Muni, but you had the great opportunity to see him. If someone is able by chance to see face to face a great saintly person like Narada, who's always serene and merciful to everyone, then immediately that conditioned soul becomes liberated. This is exactly like being situated in the full light of the sun. There cannot be any visionary impediment. So, <clears throat> So devotees, like Narada Muni, in their heart, because they know what's Krishna's desire. Krishna's desire is very clear. He tells it at the end of Bhagavad Gita. He says, those who are the most dear to me are those who help others to come to me. By giving transcendental knowledge, by giving Krishna's mercy in so many ways. So this is the desire, the most intimate desire of the Lord. And because Narada Muni is such an intimate devotee of the Lord, then he always has also in his heart the desire that others come to the Lord. So he always wants to give Krishna to everyone. So even when he sees these two demigods enjoying themselves naked, because he's always thinking, I want everybody to come back to Krishna. When he looks at them, and we know, whenever... Prabhupada said it very often, whenever a pure devotee, you know, makes a prayer or promise to Krishna, then Krishna has to fulfill. So if the pure devotee, is, he sees you and he thinks, oh, I want this person, you know, to get Krishna's mercy, then Krishna has to be merciful to this person. Although these two demigods, you know, they were just doing nonsense, enjoying themselves naked, because Narada Muni looked at them, and because he always in his heart is praying that, you know, everybody should attain the Lord's mercy. Then they got the Lord's mercy, although they were cursed. So this is what happens when we take shelter of devotees. This is what happened uh, to Diti when she took shelter of Lord Shiva and took shelter of her husband. After she did a lot of, she, she did nonsense. She acted against the order of her husband. But still she got mercy because she took shelter of devotees. And this is very important part, actually, of our philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Guru Krishna Prashali Bhai Bhakti Lata Beach. That after after wandering for millions of lives in this world, what will end our suffering? If we meet a devotee, if, and if devotee, if that devotee is going to plant into our heart the seed of devotional service. So. In his Madhurya Kadambini, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he, he tries to understand. He says, okay, what's the cause of bhakti? Is it knowledge? No. Is it renunciation? No. Is it this? Is it that? And he quotes all verses of the Bhagavatam to say, it's not this, it's not that. But what it is, he says, he quotes the verse uh, 11 to 46 of the Bhagavatam. And that verse is actually a description of the Madhya Madhikari. And in that verse, it says that the Madhya Madhikari, he acts in different ways with different uh, individuals. He offers his love to Krishna. Uh, when he meets a non-devotee who is envious, he avoids him. But when he meets a non-devotee who is innocent, he gives him his mercy. And Vijranath Chakravarti Thakur says, yes, this is the only way that Bhakti can awaken in someone's heart is 
it is that if someone has it and gives it to someone, then that person can have it. So if we somehow by Shri Prabhupada, what he did is that he had this bhakti, so much, you know, bhakti in his heart. And he, and he, because this, his devotion was so pure, anya bila shuta shunyam, jnana karma, jnana vritam, no material desire, no desire for, you know, it was not tinged with, you know, mental speculation or anything, just pure love for Krishna. So we went all around the world and some people, they became very much attracted and he was able to implant this in the heart of so many of his followers. Some of them didn't even meet him, but who met the devotees who met Prabhupada, so potent, the pure devotee, that just by uh, meeting those who met him or just by reading what he wrote, by getting his association in that way, then that seed can also enter our heart. So this is the process, actually. The, the mercy of the devotee is so important. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he left, he left Jagannath Puri to go to Vrindavan. That was his desire for some time. Uh, but he knew, he was thinking, you know, my all the devotees in Jagannath Puri, they're not going to be very happy if I leave. They're all going to want to come with me. So what he did is he left in the middle of the night. You know, they're not going to notice me. And so he walked, and we we know the story how he went to the Jarikanda forest, and he made even the tigers and the elephants chant the name of Krishna. But then what happened is that he arrived in Mathura. So what he did is he took his bath at Vishram Ghat, and then he took Darshan of the deity there, uh, K. Shavaji, and he started to dance and chant in ecstasy, and everybody was thinking, wow, who is this? this great personality, this pure devotee. And some they could realize, oh, this is actually Krishna himself. But what happened at that moment is that there was a Brahmana uh, that's called, uh, that's called in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Sanodya Brahmana, because he was part of a community of Brahmana, which is called the Sanodya. So it's known as a like lower class of Brahmana, the priest of the because there's different kinds of brahmanas. So these were the priests of the bankers. So they were they were known as a bit like more low-class brahmana. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw him, he was very, um, very much inspired by his devotion. And they chanted together and danced together for a while. And um, after that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took this brahmana away and he sat with him and he asked him, he said, I can see you're an old, an old Brahmana, and I can see you're very sincere and simple and advanced in spiritual life. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asks him, where, where did you get this treasure, this premadan, this treasure of love for Krishna? So that's a very significant question because we hear also in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, with Nitya uh, Siddha Krishna Prema Kaba Sadunoi that Krishna Prema, pure love for Krishna is eternally situated in everyone's heart and it said uh, Sada Kabunoi that it's not something to be gained from anywhere else so it's something that's in us not something we gain, gain from somewhere else but here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is asking this Brahmana where did so very significant question and the Sanodya Brahmana, he says, well, a long time ago, Sripad Madhavendra Puri came to Mathura and uh, he accepted me as a disciple and he took lunch at my home. So basically the Sanodya Brahmana tells Lord Chaitanya how he got this, this mercy, he got whatever, whatever Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is able to see in him. He says, this is coming from Madhavendra Puri. So how, how can we reconciliate these two statements that pure love of Krishna is eternally situated in one's heart, but here Lord Chaitanya is asking, where did you get it? But the point is that pure love for Krishna is eternally situated in our heart, but it's kind of, we're kind of focusing on something else. But the pure devotee is able 
to reawaken us to our actual identity. So that identity is always there. Like Prabhupada used to say, this is not a mental imposition on the mind. That this Krishna Prime is there and it's our it's completely natural. There's nothing more natural than this action. But you need someone who has actually realized that this Krishna Prime is the the only valuable thing in this world to actually make you realize this and to actually uh, reawaken this, although it's always in your heart. So, so many places in the scripture, we, we see this, um, the importance of the association of devotees. Actually, there's, there's a very nice article, uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sayasvati Thakur. He wrote uh, after his father, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur left the planet. What he noticed is that many of the followers or so-called followers of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, they are, although Bhaktisiddhanta says they know by heart all the writings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says still they don't understand one particle of what he wrote. So how is that? He says, because the problem is that these people, they take to um, empiricism, which we could translate as mental speculation. They think that, uh, you know, we can, we can understand this transcendental knowledge by our own speculation and not by the mercy of the pure devotee. And not if, if the, the basically, he says, we need the pure devotee to take us by the end while going through the Shastra. Because the Shastra, he says, is what are the scriptures? Like this is the, he said, the scriptures are nothing but the words of the pure devotee. So if one rejects pure devotion as being the goal of the scriptures, then what's the point of the scriptures? Because that's what the scriptures are, the, pure, the words of the pure devotee. That's why Sri Prabhupada was warning us again and again that we should not hear kirtan from non-devotees, especially Mayavadis, who completely misunderstand uh, what's the actual point of kirtan and what's the actual point of this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So, <coughs> so it's very even the the word Krishna. It's not, you know, we can separate it, letter K, R, you know, I, S, H, and A. But it's not that the letters are themselves spiritual. If a completely neophyte devotee pronounces these letters, this vibration together, and if a pure devotee pronounces this vibration, there is a very different experience because the pure devotee, while pronouncing these same syllables, is going to get actual darshan. Of Krishna. And let's say the Mayavadi who chants the name of Krishna, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in our Nam Chintamani, he says he's only going to hell. <laughs> so if one, if one doesn't make offense by, let's say we chant with offenses, you know, we try to chant Hare Krishna, we make offenses. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in our Nam Chintamani, still, although we're making offenses, we're always making a little bit of advancement. But if we chant Hare Krishna with a Mayavad understanding, meaning that we think, oh, actually, one day I'm going to realize that I am Krishna, you know, and that, that was just a way to realize this. If we chant with this mentality, back to know, that where it says, we can chant eternally and we're not going to make any spiritual advancement. So these, uh, this Krishna consciousness, these texts of the holy name, all have to be approached by the mercy of the pure devotee, by the mercy also of Chaitanya. Here in Ottawa, you're so fortunate that you're worshipping Sri Sri Goranitai. And as Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishna Das Kariyar Goswami says that it's very difficult to chant Hare Krishna. He says, because we can chant, he says, life after life, but if we commit offenses, he says, we're never going to get this goal of chanting Hare Krishna, which is pure love of God. 
very difficult to chant Hare Krishna. Very difficult to approach Krishna. Directly. Prabhupada in his arrival address in Atlanta, a very famous arrival address, it's on YouTube, you can look for it, Prabhupada arrival address Atlanta. It's famous because it only lasted a few minutes, maybe two, three minutes. What Prabhupada said in his arrival address, because he was coming from a few places, he was coming from Mexico and uh, a few other places, and all these centers, they had deities of Goranitai. And um, Prabhupada was in the mood of, uh, of awe in front, because he was seeing how Gorni, these Goranitai, they're bringing all these low great people and they're making them surrender you know, to such an like, inconceivable degree. So Prabhupada, he, he was in this mood when he arrived in Atlanta and then he got Darshan of Gornitai there and he started his lecture and he said, it's very difficult. He says, Krishna is kind, but Krishna, he says, you surrender and then I give you shelter. But he says, these two brothers, Gora and Nitai, they don't even ask you to surrender. They just throw their mercy to anyone. Krishna Das Kiraj Goswami says, Lord Chaitanya is supremely independent and he can deliver anyone he wants to. And he did, he delivered Chagai and Dai, who were like, it's inconceivable to understand how sinful they were. They were killing Brahmanas. They were always drunk, offending and everyone, you know, and they were doing this and, you know, it's okay to be a, an offender, but to be an offender in a place where there's so much pure devotees, like in Navadweep at that time when Lord Chaitanya was there, you know, that's probably the most dangerous thing you can, if you're an offender, like you offend just materialists, you know, that's, I mean, that's bad, but it's not too bad. But if you offend all the eternal associates of the Lord, especially Lord Nityananda, who's Balaram himself, throw a rock in his face. But, but Lord Chaitanya, he arrived and he was about to throw his Sudarsh on this, you know, let's finish the rascal. Well, Lord Nityananda said, no, this is not your incarnation. Your incarnation is Patita Pavana, the savior of the fallen. And Lord Chaitanya he had to surrender to <coughs> the desire of Lord Nityananda. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he prays like this. In one of his bhajan, he says, my only hope is that Lord Chaitanya is called Patita Pavana. He says, this is my only hope, that Lord Chaitanya is called Patita Pavana. And that the verdict of all the Vedas is that his mercy is a high to His mercy is causeless. He can just give it to anyone. So that's why it's so nice in Ottawa that you're worshipping uh, Sri Sri Gauranitai. And... Uh, yeah, if we learn Krishna Kirash Kaviraj Goswami, he says that we should we should approach them, we should he said chant their name like we do, we chant Pancha Tadva Mantra. Of course, it's not he said because he says that the holy name of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they're so potent, they don't accept offenses. So we can chant their name, they don't take offenses. But if you chant Hare Krishna, then offenses start counting. So we could think, you know. Let's chant 16 rounds of Gaur Nityananda, Gaur Nityananda. But, uh, but Prabhupada, he says, Lord Chaitanya, he gave us a process to chant Hare Krishna. Therefore, we chant Hare Krishna on his order by meditating on him, by meditating that this is his desire that we chant like this, and by asking for his mercy and by participating in his, um, in his Gauri Sankirtan movement, which is meant to give him satisfaction, to give him happiness. Because as we were saying in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, who is not different from Lord Chaitanya, he says his biggest desire is that uh, the conditioned souls come back to him. So when we're engaged in the Sankirtan movement, when we're chanting in the street, when we're distributing books, we're doing all these things, we're giving a lot of happiness to Lord Chaitanya. And we're giving a lot of happiness to Prabhupada. And this is the key, actually. Um, in that article, I was saying Bhakti Siddhanta when he's speaking about these false disciples of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he says that the only way, you know, to spread Krishna consciousness, to have the potency to spread Krishna consciousness, 
because we see sometimes we can make so much endeavor, we can distribute so many books, but it seems like it's not working too much. But he said the only way to really spread Krishna consciousness, he says, is if the acharyas they're pleased with you. The only way to make spiritual advancement, he says, is basically if those who are spiritually advanced, they're happy with you. If you enter a room and those who are spiritually advanced, they're they're feeling uncomfortable. Oh no, I'm not. Not, not, not him again <laughs> he's just gonna <laughs> do i don't know what then it's very not good for your spiritual life if they're thinking like this but instead you should make you know when you enter the room with the spiritually advanced devotees they should think oh yes yes this nice this nice devotee. and you should do something to serve them and you should be in this mood so he says that Bhakti Siddhanta, only if the acharya is pleased with you can you have the potency to share this message. Uh, so it's very significant for us. Anyway, so like we covered a few things going from the pregnancy of DT in the evening <laughs> to, to uh, where we are now. <laughs> but uh, now I wish we can hear from the devotees uh, in Ottawa. Oh, before I'm going to give you darshan because I'm up the temple. I mean, it's kind of far. I don't think we can see. But uh, that's kind of far. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Oh, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Samuel Prabhu. It was really nice. Uh, some really nice points you made. And uh, maybe now what we could do is uh, ask devotees if uh, anybody has any questions or comments or realization based on what was just spoken. Um, online there is a reactions button at the bottom of zoom so you could just click it and you can raise your hand and maybe we could take the questions or comments in order and in the temple if you have any questions you can actually raise your hand with your physical hand <laughs> and say something so that would be really nice so perhaps some reflections you know something that maybe you appreciated that you liked that Samuel Prabhu said some points. I know I saw, I saw a few things that I uh, wanted to say, but maybe we'll, we'll ask devotees first to say something. We have a hand up. <laughs> and who is this? Guru Prashad Prabhu, please. Hare Krishna, <laughs> Samuel Prabhu, thank you very much. You gave a very inspiring talk, although you started somewhere, but you covered the very important aspects of um, our um, devotional life. <clears throat> My thinking is also similar, but then <clears throat> I kind of reflected myself, you know, so if I know that I'm really um, in a very fallen situation uh, due to past karma, if I really repent, then only I can also seek shelter of, uh, you know, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nitai. Um, I think that's one of the key um, factors that I am really fallen. So I need, I need the mercy. So I, if I approach them with this attitude, I think that's very conducive. Of course, they, uh, they are ready to give the mercy to anyone. But we become better recipients, you know, because of our, uh, you know, understanding of our true nature, and, uh, and also this um, understanding of our true nature also makes us humble. So they, we respect, you know, senior um, Vaishnavas, the Acharyas, and even the scriptures. So, in my thinking, that uh, I'm relating to my own thought here. So I think that uh, is important for me. Hare Krishna. Yes, thank you so much, Guru Prashad Prabhu. It's a very important point. It's, a, it's funny because, you know, this point of re repentance, sometimes we see in the street, uh, I don't know if you see or not, <laughs> but uh, some Christians, they have some big sign, uh, 
repent uh, for your sins or something. Of course, in Krishna consciousness, our first line preaching, we don't start with that usually. <laughs> we don't tell people to repent exactly when they, we meet them. So we tell them, chant, you'll feel happy, or here's some nice prashad or some book on how to feel good. Uh, but uh, but there is something really deep in this. Uh, I mean, because repenting, it means basically understanding that what I've been doing in the past is there's a problem with that. And uh, maybe I've been doing this for, for a long time that it's very di difficult to change, like Kalia. He was saying, um, he was saying, although he was repenting, he was telling the Lord at the same time, he was like, you know, I'm born in the body of a snake, which is a body in the mode of ignorance, Tamagun. So he says, naturally, I have to act according to this conditioning. He said, but you, you only, my Lord, you can help me. Uh, to get out of this conditioning because otherwise I'm going to be forced to act according to my conditioning. So that, that repentance also, if it's accompanied, like you're saying, also by uh, this this humility of like also that without Krishna's mercy, uh, there's not much we can do that becomes very conducive for actually grabbing that mercy, which you're saying is always available. Yeah, very nice point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel Prabhu. Thank you, Guru Prasad Prabhu. Do we have any more, more thoughts, reflections, perhaps? One point uh, that I really like that you said, Prabhu, is uh, you were talking about uh, you know the form of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and how they are so merciful that uh, they're just giving love of God just really like this, right? And whereas, you know, Krishna in his you know, traditional personal form, you go, you, he says, you surrender, and then I record, award them accordingly and whatnot. And I, I think that that is, you know, it's such a nice uh, uh, thought, right, that you shared, you know, how Prabhupada was thinking how Lord Chaitanya Again, there's so many Lord Chaitanya, so many sets of Gorni Tajidis that are out there, and they're just bringing uh, everybody close to Krishna somehow. And, and then this point that you made about uh, how if we want to become a part of this, this mission, right, or a part of what, what's going on right now, and, uh, and help others come to Krishna this way, right, be, be troops, be Lord Chaitanya's party somehow, then, uh, then we need to work on, on pleasing the devotees. And that, that's very important. And, Vaishnava, and and through that way, if we please the Vaishnavas, if we do service, devotional service, and the Vaishnavas are happy, right? They're, they're satisfied. Then it becomes easier for that mercy to, to be able to flow, right? Somehow, and you can connect with people in, in a way. So that I thought that's very nice. That's a really, thank you. Yeah, we're very for fortunate that somehow they're because that that's what like Lord Chaitanya in the, in the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you notice that he says how well Krishna Daskara Goswami explained his thought process. That he said, Okay, I came as Lord Krishna and I displayed my pastimes and uh, and then I left. But it seems that it's it, not many people are taking to devotional service. So he came and gave it so freely, actually, uh, that uh, yeah, we're very fortunate. <laughs> I, I was actually going to ask, have you had experiences? I mean, you, you've gone on Sankirtan, you know, you go very often and you go and meet people. And sometimes people are maybe not necessarily interested in spiritual life or they're not... Uh, uh, they're not big philosophers or anything like this, but have you seen them, you know, as you've been meeting some of these people, they maybe have been attracted to you because of the friendship or because they thought that, you know, you look cool with your shaved head and, and, and robes that you're wearing and somehow, you know, that changed, right? This, this whole uh, 
you saw that suddenly they took up the philosophy or suddenly they, they became curious, right? Suddenly they wanted to get to know Krishna because, you know, that, that's another point. You know, you may attract some people or may, may meet some people on the street and, and give them a book, but they're like, okay, that's nice, but I'm not really interested in, in Krishna consciousness or I don't really want to have a relationship with God. I am suffering. Life sucks. It's really difficult, but they don't make that connection, right? And so have you seen, can you share maybe some experiences that you had where, where, where you've seen the transformation take place and, and uh, see, seen Krishna's magic, you know, at play? Yeah, very nice. Very nice question. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, one instance that happened, actually, we were on Harinam, uh, I think it was like two years ago. And... Uh, and that was like a kind of very intense harinam because we were because what we do is we send an invitation we tell the devotees we're going to be at this place from this time to this time so we went and we started harinam at a certain corner downtown when there's a lot of people and not long after we started <laughs> there's a group of <laughs> very intense like evangelical christian like maybe like 15 of them who arrived and they put huge speaker like maybe 10 meters in front of us <laughs> and one of them <laughs> took the mic and started and there was like so many people it's like the most downtown you can have in montreal like that corner on and he was saying like oh this krishna cult and, da, 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 da. and he was like you know shooting verses from the bible and like so many so many intense like things like and, and on and on and the devotee is like they started like you know are like arguing and at, but at the same time kirtan was going on and anyway it, it lasted for an hour that was crazy because we couldn't leave because we we sent the message we're going to be there from this time to this time so if we leave the, some devotees will show up and they'll be like you know where are the devotees and, and uh, actually it's on youtube because <laughs> so, they filmed it <laughs> they put the a, yeah, this the, the the name of the video on YouTube is called. It's like a seventy-five thousand views or something. It's called <laughs> "Preaching the Gospel to the Hare Krishna Call." <laughs> it was very, <laughs> very intense <laughs> for an hour like this. And uh, what happened is that uh, I mean, at some point we left. And it was about you know it's time to go. Also. And a week after, one of the one of the Christians of this group, they were coming from Ontario, like somewhere, like they were like on a on a rampage uh, <laughs> pilgrimage, and uh, one of them he came the next week at this spot where we were, and uh, he went and he to us and he said, oh, "I was part of this group last week," and uh, he was saying that he felt very bad. He said we really like went like over the top, like you guys are, you know good people and so we gave him some prashadam and, and he was kind of you know, the devotees were appreciative so i mean that krishna gave him some <laughs> some realization but we can see what's interesting on harinam is that i mean now it's been like a few years where i mean we're going in like six days a week like, and uh, what happens is that and if in the past week sometimes there was a few conference like physical confrontations like sometimes weird things happen and, uh, but it was last year or two years ago we were at uh, Vel in one metro in Montreal and uh, so we were chanting there and there was this guy like he was like this drunk guy and he was uh, kind of like a bit pushing the devotees and he went to the table oh, he would drop like push a git on the floor and this and that and I was just praying like to learn the shingya there I was, just like please stop him don't allow him to make too much offenses like don't give him opportunities to make offenses to devotees and to gita like this and it took maybe <laughs> like 10 20 seconds and there's a homeless lady who crossed the street and she arrived and she like kicked him like super strong <laughs> in the in the chest and then she went like with her fist like and he was kind of backing off and she was like telling him get out of here get out of here and then he, he, he left them and then she comes back to us and she's like 
She's like, if he comes back, you come and get me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, there's always some. Uh, sometimes it's very small, like very small, like little miracle. There's one thing I have, one thing I'm gonna share. It's, um, it was last fall actually. We were doing Harinam. Uh, it was a bit like getting a bit colder, and um, so we had we have a donation basket, and um, there was a homeless guy who arrived, and he had some, uh, you know, like these cart, like it's kind of these papers, and you put stamps, and after like five stamps, you get like a free coffee. That's like these McDonald's one, and he had like three, four free coffees, and he went and like to give us that, and like one <laughs> one devotee was like. Like get get it back it back off back off and but I, I we I could see okay he wants to give like these scoops so I was like okay sure you can put in the donation basket and then what happened is that I was trying to distribute a Ishopanishad to a lady a very nice lady and then she was kind of like oh I'm gonna go get the coffee and then I'll come back I'll have some change and then I thought, hey, we have free coffees and we're not drinking coffee. So I asked her, are you going to McDonald's? She's like, yeah. So I gave her like three, four free coffees. And she was like, whoa. And she goes to the McDonald's and then she comes back and gave us like $20 out of reciprocation. So we <laughs> gave her a few books like this. But then I was thinking, you know, this is why like we have like on behalf of Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan movement, we have to accept anything people can give, even if it's like, for devotees like useless, you know, coffee coupons. Because what happened is that we took these coupons, gave them to someone who felt so grateful that she gave $20. Maybe she was not even coming back. And then she got so many books of Prabhupada. So this this is like how Krishna's hand works, like in this, this Sankirtan situation. And it's always very like devotees, they get a lot of satisfaction just by seeing Krishna's hand work. Like it may appear like to be not much and um, but um on last story okay <laughs> when we get into sankirtan stories it's like it, it never ends so i'm just gonna say one last sankirtan story uh last december during book during book marathon um so yeah we went on harinam and um i don't know it was like my during book marathon i mean or so we don't we still do Arinam. We don't do so much more for books, but we just on Arinam try to do more books. And because I'm not a very good book distributor, I was like really like praying, like Krishna, like I wish I can like talk to someone today, like about you know, Krishna consciousness. And we arrived, we we stopped downtown, we put all this stuff down. We were arranging for the Arinam to start, and then I get off the van. Then that. Just when I get off the van, there's this guy who comes to me and he's like, can I speak to you? <laughs> I'm like, sure, sure. And he tells me like, I'm from Mexico and I'm like illegally staying here. Like I've been illegally staying here for like the past 17 years. And he said, and now I'm, I just discovered like today, like that my girlfriend is uh, cheating on me. She's actually, he said, she's actually a prostitute. It's like she like, when I'm working during the day, she brings like people here and you know she has you know, whatever, sex with them. So he was like really like you know fed up with everything. So I started like preaching to him. And during our conversation, I think I fed him like three, four <laughs> for Shadow <Adam> Cookie. <laughs> and then he was like, I have to because there was a police station like next corner. And he says, I'm going after 17 years to go to the police, you know. And, you know, tell them I've been here illegally and they're going to ship me to Mexico, whatever. And so anyway, I gave him a Chopinishad and I walked him there, like, to the to the police station. And then at the door, he was, like, crying in my arms. And, <laughs> and he was like, you know, you're the only person <laughs> that came to me. And I was like, yes, this is Krishna. So when you're in Mexico, you go to Iskand. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, yeah, and I make him promise he would go to Escon when he go to Mexico. And then anyway, he took his issue by the shot. That was the only thing he had in his hand, like when he entered that police station. And then who knows what happened. But yeah, it's just like if we ask Krishna, actually, because I mean, going on Harinam, that's one thing. But also if we like, call, I, I'm, I'm noticing more and more, if we cultivate really a meditation, a prayerful meditation, then Krishna can really reciprocate uh, 
in an amazing way, just, just like in Nectar of Instruction, Rupa Goswami says that uh, we should not perform devotional service uh, mindlessly, but we should, you know, really be, what, you know, the Sankirtan movement, if we understand what, what it is, you know, Lord Shukadeva Goswami says this is the most auspicious activity in the entire universe. But we do it and we're like looking at the time, okay, uh, what am I going to do after that? And But if we really like try to understand, that's what he tells you, Gabriel. So he tells Maharaj Pariksit, please try to understand the glories of Sankirtan. So that is so that you can also explain it to others. So it's very deep, like very, like, uh, very deep topic. But by these experiences, we then when we see Krishna's hand like this, it, it's really inspiring. Anyway, <laughs> I went off a little bit of Prabhu, your, your question, Prabhu, but it's always in Sankirtan stories. It's like, uh, you can never get enough. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's really wonderful. That's what we were looking for. Um, thank you. So maybe on that note, actually, uh, we have this Bhadra campaign. So this marathon that, that's taking place right now. And Mandala Ram Prabhu spoke about this last week. And uh, it's an opportunity for us to um, distribute, you know, Srila Prabhupada's message, distribute Srimad Bhagavatam to, to our friends, to our families. And we made a pledge, I think, Iskon Ottawa, that we would try to get, um, what was it, 15 sets of Bhagavatam? Is that correct? Does anybody remember? Was it 15? And does anybody know what the cutoff date is for, for that? Is it the 12th? something like that the 12th of maybe september 11th or 12th of september and that's when the when, when uh uh we're, we're hoping to get these these bhagavatams out so um yeah please if, if you have any friends i think last week mandal rampa came to the temple it was uh i think it was friday or so and he was already going to the basement giving one Bhagavatam set and he gave another one to one of his brothers. So I think two are already spoken for at least, there may be more, but uh, this is this is our opportunity, I guess, to, to also experience actually, really bhakti in action. When you go on Sankirtan and you go put yourself on the line somehow to go give to others, the Vaishnavas are very pleased, right? Krishna is very pleased and he makes he makes mercy flow, right? And there's no obstacles. He makes sure he moves all the obstacles out of the way. And so uh, we should definitely take advantage of that so that we have this time to, to do that. And on that note, uh, next week is actually going to be Balaram Jayanti. So we are going to, there will be a poster coming out and an invitation as well. And uh, we will have a Harinam. So we'll go and do some Kirtan, some Hare Krishna, chanting Hare Krishna. And the plan is to meet at the park, Strathcona Park, just down on Somerset Street, right by the river, from 2.30 till about 4.30. And so we'll be doing some chanting. And depending on, you know, if, uh, if, if the energy carries us, maybe we'll go and do some walking high now, depending on who's there, if we have kids, if we're able to be mobile or not. But we'll definitely set up a book table. We'll be able to give stuff to others. We'll have some prasadam too, maybe some cookies, right, to hand out as well. And so that is our opportunity to plug in. So next Sunday, next Sunday, 2.30 to 4.30 at the park. And then 5 o'clock, we'll have a program here. And we'll have a guest, Krishna Das Kaviraj Prabhu, coming from Lindsay, Toronto area. And it also happens to be, it'll be the anniversary of the installation of Shushu Gorni time, right? That's a little bit here. And he was one of Krishna Das Kaviraj Prabhu was one of the first people here when that happened, right? And that was many that was decades ago. And uh, and so he will speak a little bit about uh, uh, you know his memories, right? Of Shushu Gorni Thai here in Ottawa and his time in Ottawa with the other devotees. So he'll be here actually in person, not online, but they're gonna come down and him and his wife, Mother Purnamasi, they will be here. So that's that. And uh, next week also, I've been asked to make an announcement that it's going to be part two of our cleaning, Maha cleanup at the temple. So last time we had about 17 uh, friends, devotees that came here and we, we did cleaning the kitchens underneath the, the, uh, the racks, the shoe racks, you know, the windows were being done behind the stove and, and there's still a little bit more to, to do. So instead of starting uh, at eight o'clock, next week the plan is to start at nine o'clock and to go to about 12 12 30 
and the road will also be prashad on that. So, so they'll be next Saturday. Sorry, yeah, next Saturday from nine to to twelve thirty. So please expect an email to come out, and then uh, you'll get the details. So if you'd like to come out, we'll definitely find something to do. There's always service. That, that's what uh, that's the beautiful thing about uh, our movement. There's jobs, jobs, jobs for. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, uh, Samuel Prabhu. Um, it was really, really wonderful to have you here. We hope we get to see you and uh, maybe your good wife, you come and visit us in person soon. Uh, maybe we could come on Sankirtan together with you and uh, you could show us how it's done. So now- Thank you so, thank you so much for, for giving me the, your association. I'm always so inspired when I go to it. Otherwise, so I was feeling I'm feeling very humble to be in your association, and I, hopefully, if everything goes nicely, we would come here in October. Wonderful. Ones. Thank you so much, and Thank please you. accept my okay. All right, so uh, we will continue now with a few minutes. We'll do a little bit of kirtan, and uh, then we'll have some, some darshan with the DJs before the curtains close. And then uh, those of us who are here at the temple will have some prasadam afterwards. There's a Sunday feast that'll be served. So uh, thank you all for joining us. And Shishigorni Tai Ki. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.